After making the Endgame Rabies Druid build guide, I wanted to look into some good examples of someone showcasing a budget version to see a few different ways to play the build and test which would work best overall. I looked all over YouTube, and I honestly couldn't find even one video showcasing a budget Rabies Druid. Oh look, I heard his videos are terrible. With that said, I decided to make one for myself, and from building one up, I can see maybe why nobody made one prior. However, there's a silver lining as it's still as fun as a dumb fun build, and any better gear than what I'm going to showcase in this video will only enhance the experience from there. In today's video, I'm going to go over the build for the Budget Rabies Druid, of which is built off of bare bones gear, but can still handle mobs, and spread its infection faster than what happened in 2020. I'm going to go over the attributes, the skill tree, the gear for my character and my mercenary, and afterwards I'm going to show you guys some gameplay so you can see this build in action. But do keep in mind that when it comes to this build, there are different ways you can be able to gear the character depending on your needs, whether you're trying to go for maximum DPS, you're trying to do magic fine character, or a hybrid of the two. Just keep in mind when it comes to looking at the gear choices that I'm gonna be choosing, that you can choose alternative gear depending on the demand that you have for your build. Now let's go ahead and get into the video. For the attributes, I have enough strength and dexterity to be able to equip the gear, and the remaining points go into vitality. For the skill trees, keep in mind that this build is only at level 75, so there's still a lot of skill points to invest as you level up and make the build even better. But also, the skills are focused on rabies, as well as having distractions to allow you to bite enemies without making your survivability a huge cause for concern. I have invested nothing into the elemental skill tree, but in the shape-shifting skill tree, I have maxed out lycanthropy as it boosts the werewolf form's life. Then I maxed out rabies. Then, for the summoning skill tree, I maxed out Poison Creeper as it synergizes Rabies, but it also has its own type of poison damage aside from Rabies, so they can be used together without one overriding the other. I then put one point down to summon Grizzly, I'll better explain why when going over the gameplay, and all of the remaining points I put into Oak Sage. For the gear, something to keep in mind is that there is a lot of room for improvement. However, I wanted to keep it closer to true budget, aside from one item that I'll cover shortly. This way, when watching this build, for those interested in trying it out, if they have any better gear than what I'm showcasing in this video, it'll only get better for their experience from here. Also, when I consider what is budget and what is not, budget is in regards to the gear not being optimized and underutilized, but it still works to give a good example of how the build plays out without a huge investment needing to make it work. And this build is centered around the idea of players already completing hell difficulty, as I originally tried a character level 60 setup, and unfortunately it didn't work well at all at that character level, at least for me. So I made him level 75 for the additional boost to attributes, skill tree points, as well as to open up more gear choices in comparison. The helm is a plus two to Rabies Wolf Head, socketed with a Rao Rune, Ort Rune, and Thol Rune to boost up his Cold Resistance, Lightning Resistance, and Fire Resistance. The amulet is a Mahimote Curio for the bonus to attack rating, attributes boost, and help with all resistance. The body armor is Treachery for the Fate proc to help with the resistances as well as to add some physical damage reduction. It also has increased attack speed, faster hit recovery, and Cold Resistance. The weapon is Plague Bearer, and of all of the gear, this would be the least budget item used. It has a Poison Nova proc, plus to Rabies, and some help with Poison Resistance. To make this weapon better, you can socket it with a Shale Rune to add some increased attack speed. However, I just kept it as it was, and not at all because I forgot to add it in until already getting the gameplay footage and not wanting to re-record it all. The shield is the Rhyme Rune word for all of its help with blocking, regenerate mana, which is a big issue for this build. It also has all resistance, and cannot be frozen. The boots are Sanders Rip Wrap for the faster run walk, attack rating, strength, and dexterity. The next three items I ended up gambling from Anya back when he was character level 60. I spent just under 300,000 gold to get these items, and that's based on RNG or random number generation. The first ring is a magic ring with fire resistance, the belt has life, and the second ring is an attack rating, dual leech, and minor life and poison resistance ring. The gloves are trans gloves for the plus to poison skill damage and cold resistance. What I have on switch is optional. If you don't mind some shape shifting for tougher enemies, this can help out quite a bit. I have a lower resistance wand, and the shield is an Ancient's Pledge rune word. In the inventory is the cube, both tomes, lots of full rejuves, and the small charms are all one of each resistance with 11% boost. Again, this is really budget, and anything that you can add to this build will only make it better from here. For the additional stats, he has 5% life leech and mana leech, 45 IAS or increased attack speed, 40 faster run walk, 20 faster hit recovery, and plus 25% to poison skill damage. Now that we've discussed the attributes, the skill trees, the gear for my character and my mercenary, let's go ahead and check out this build in action to see how well it actually plays out. 
with the gameplay. For anyone who'd be curious as to which player settings I'm using for my build guides, the past, presently on screen, and in the future, down in the bottom left corner is what the example gameplay being shown is currently at. This build is set up just to be able to run cows. You can take it through Act 1, such as with the Cold Plains, the Outer Cloister outside of the pits, and pretty much the Wilderness areas without too much issue. However, this video is just to showcase how the build will play out for those curious to try the budget version before considering investing into the more expensive endgame build that I made prior. Video link down in the description below. The reason that I'm not running a mercenary with this build is because he ended up dying quite a lot, and to not waste gold, I'd rather just run without him, as I'm using the summons in his place, as they are all just a distraction tactic anyway. I mentioned before discussing why I'm running summons, and for anyone who has played Poison Nova Necros, summons doing damage can interrupt the poison damage. However, when setting up to find different herds, summoning all the different types at your disposal, they are merely a distraction for the cows to focus on while you run up, make your bite, then start running around to the other side of the herd to either bite one, or just have them chase you into the infected cows. I stuck with just using one of the wolves as my distraction because they are both lower in mana compared to the bear, but they also die quite quickly, so they can't interrupt the poison damage before they are taken out. This helps to keep the poison damage spreading as you run around and group up the cows to continue spreading the poison, and then watching them start to drop off into a much more manageable amount. And if you end up throwing some magic find on this build, this can hopefully help you to get some more desirable items to help make this build even better. Looking at the poison damage for this build, it does between 7000 and 7500 damage. However, that does take just over 12 seconds to reach full effect. So the playstyle centers around summoning, distract, bite and infect, bide your time, bite again as necessary, and repeat as needed. Even with the very large herd that are grouped up, you're just keeping them running around towards those infected, and going to the opposite end to ensure that the group starts to tighten up and keep the spreading of the poison damage consistent. And the whole time, I stayed relatively safe so long as I would just bite and bail to run and round up the bovine, while the mad cow disease would start to spread throughout the herd. Despite the drawbacks that many would criticize this build for, there's a few reasons that I'm still glad I made this video. One, I like to make endgame and budget versions of builds so there's a variety for different players to play a build without feeling that there's high expectations to make it fun. Two, I didn't see anyone else make this build guide. So even if there's those that don't enjoy this particular build setup, hopefully this video will help them to decide if it's worth the time and investment needed to make the endgame version instead. And three, after my first Druid playthrough of Hell, this is similar to what I ended up making prior. And as I mentioned in the endgame build guide, this was dumb fun for me to play without taking it too serious. I had my builds for magic finding different areas, then those dedicated to just leveling, but I also had a few that I played as a means of unwinding and doing something different that has no stakes in it, but that I can enjoy nonetheless. Now, this build won't be for everyone, and I understand that. However, for those who want to see it played much faster and smoothly, make sure to check out my build guide for the endgame version, one that drops not only cows, but all the other enemy types without issue. Video will be linked down in the description below. And that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we're able to see if this build would be something that you would be interested in going into the future. And if anything, at least just enjoyed the video. 
If you like this kind of content and want to see more, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification to be notified whenever a new video comes out. Come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, man. There you are. There you are. And if you like this video, please let me know by leaving a like. It really is appreciated to be able to help my channel to grow. And if you want to see more of my Diablo 2 Resurrected content, make sure to click the card in the corner up above to check out my Diablo 2 Resurrected playlist with a lot of videos already in it with a lot more coming in the very near future. Other than that, I hope you guys are staying safe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.